Good morning. And welcome to worship in this season of Easter. Welcome to all of you on this beautiful sunny day who are here. And welcome to all of you who are listening on the radio or watching on Facebook Live. We're just so glad to have you. And for those of you on Facebook Live, there really are people here, I swear. I know the camera stops about halfway, but everybody say hey. hey. See, I told you they're here. So um, thanks to everyone who makes worship possible, uh, to Rick and to all who contribute to the media ministry, um, to Rachel and our ushers and acolytes and bulletin preparers and the wonderful handbell choir. Thank you. That was really, really lovely. And we get to hear from them again later and our singing choir as well. Um, just a couple of very quick announcements. We, um, our newsletter is going out this week. So if you have anything to get into the newsletter, it is a combined May june newsletter so any events that are coming up for both may and june um, please try to get to the office either tomorrow or tuesday and marlene can put all of that together and um and our wonderful uh, newsletter ladies will get be getting that out on thursday um flowers here are from uh, the funeral of dolores uh, jacobs which was yesterday and so we want to keep the Jacobs family in prayers um, going forward. Um, she was a, a wonderful woman and she will be missed. And I think everything else is in the newsletter or in the bulletin rather. Remember that you can always go uh, to trinitysg.org to see what's happening. The calendar is in there um, every week and is updated on a regular basis for new items. So with that, let's all take a deep cleansing breath. Breathe in the Spirit of God as we prepare to worship. Confession and forgiveness found on page 211 of your hymnal. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 363, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain.
worship continues with the greeting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. continues with the prayer found on page two of your bulletin. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son. Amen. You may be seated.
first reading today is from Acts 5, 27 to 32. Peter has been arrested for proclaiming the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. His response to the char charges of the high priest summarizes the early church's proclamation of forgiveness of sin through repent repentance. Here is the reading. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them saying, we gave you strict orders not to teach in the name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus whom he had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witness to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly. Psalm 118 is found in your bulletin. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have entered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us life. Life in the vessel, procession, and grandmother, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. The book of Re Revelation recounts a mystical vision of the risen Christ experienced by a Christian prophet named John. Here he describes Christ as a timeless redeemer, the, be the beginning, present, and at all time. Here is the reading. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen look he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wait. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord. God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord.
gospel for the second Sunday of Easter comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The unprecedented events of the day of resurrection continue as the risen Jesus appears to his fearful disciples. A week later, after Thomas worships Jesus, Jesus pronounces that the blessings of the resurrection are also for those who have not seen and yet believe. Here is the gospel. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Lord, on this beautiful sunny day, we ask that as we are in this room, you come in to be with us, that we might not have fear or doubt, but faith and belief. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, what a difference a week makes, right? Um... Here we are, it's still the Easter season because Easter isn't just a day, Um, it's it's almost every Sunday or in some respects almost every day. Um, But it's a little different than the actual Easter Sunday, isn't it? I mean, we've still got some, you know, some Easter lilies up here. We've still got the banners up. We're gonna be singing Easter songs for um, a few more Sundays, but no trumpet. Um, you know, there's, there's the bells, that's wonderful, I love the bells, but you know, it's just not quite as, there's just not quite as much oomph in this room as there was last Sunday. There's no shooting streamers, um, whichever way they shoot. So it's just, you know, it's a little bit different than it was last Sunday. It makes, it makes a, a difference the week um, that we've had. And yet, for the disciples, it's actually kind of, they're feeling kind of exactly the same thing. They're experiencing almost the same thing that we are. We've heard the news, they've heard the news, but you know, it's just not quite settled in yet. They're not quite sure what to do with that. This is one of the first gospel readings that from last week to this week is really almost told in real time. So we started out last Sunday with Mary and the other women coming to the tomb and then Peter coming to the tomb. And as we pick up this gospel reading, it's just a few hours later, it's night of that same day. And despite everything they've heard, they've locked themselves in a room because they're fearful. They don't know what to do. They don't know what's gonna happen next. Last week, I talked a little bit about how this uh, is referred to as an idle tale, that um, you know, maybe not everybody's gonna believe this because how could it be believable? It's just, it's not believable. And so this is kind of the follow-up to that. So even though we've had some of these you know, sightings or semi-sightings, this, you know, once you get back into that room, you're like, I don't think that really did happen. 
the re- that's the reaction of the disciples. And that, so that's why they're back to the closed room. And not just closed, I mean, they've locked the door. Now, I have to say that I love this text from John. It is one of my, John's gospel is by far one of my favorite gospels. Um, I also, uh, my other favorites are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, but, um, but John, I love, um, John is one of my favorite gospels because it has one of, some of these wonderful stories that we um, don't hear that often. And frankly, I don't get to preach on very often. Um, typically, I go on vacation the Sunday after Easter. And so, honestly, I haven't preached on this gospel in, I think, six or about six years or seven years. And the last time I preached on it was when I was doing my um, CPE, my clinical pastoral education. Um, and I did my CPE, um, which all seminary students are required to do, at, um, not at a hospital, but at a care center. Ebenezer Care Center in um, right just south of downtown Minneapolis. And part of my CPE was that I had to preach twice at this care center. You know, very much like going to the nursing home and preaching as Pastor Lane and I do um, once a month. So, um, so that, that the first time I preached it, as I mentioned, this particular text was at this care center. And so like, you know, many um, care centers, the folks at the care center don't get out as much as we all do. And so as I was preaching to them, I was thinking very, very much about that, that as these folks, as I was preaching this text about disciples in a locked room, I thought, well, you know, I bet a lot of these folks kind of feel like maybe they're not in a locked room, but they're in a room a lot. They don't get to get out very much. And I thought, man, you know, they probably really are understanding how the disciples are feeling. And then I thought again this this morning as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about the last two years and how many semi-locked rooms all of us have been in during the COVID pandemic. And of course, we were doing this in some respects out of fear of catching the virus or spreading the virus, but we were also doing it out of love so that we would not catch the virus or spread the virus to someone else. And so this idea of being enclosed in locked rooms like the disciples are, I think we can all kind of relate to that, that there is just this kind of stuffiness that we've had, this, um, this strange experience over these last two years. So John, this text is often called, this text from John is often called the Doubting Thomas text, right? I mean, when we read this and we hear Thomas's name come up um, in the second time, we're like, oh yeah, that's the guy, Doubting Thomas. But this is really kind of unfair to Thomas, and it's actually kind of unfair to the text, because there's a lot more going on in this text than just Thomas doubting what he hasn't seen. Because there was a lot of doubting going on before Thomas as well, right? That's why the disciples had uh, retreated to this room, because they were doubting. They were in fear. They didn't know what to do next. So Thomas is by no means the only doubter in this story. And he wasn't there the previous week. So let's give the guy some credit, right? There's a lot going on here beyond what uh, Thomas is um, it, Thomas is not the star of the story, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So like I said, we've picked up right where we left off. It's Easter evening, and you know Mary and Peter have seen it in the morning, but you know what? They, um, they apparently just, it wasn't enough. They, they're back to that room in the evening. And that's the same room, ironically, that just three days before they had had the Last Supper with Jesus. They'd had their feet washed. They'd communed with him. They'd heard those words, the body and blood shed for you, this new covenant, love one another. They're in that room, and they can't help but remember all that, right? I mean, that's what what happens when you come to a room where something significant has happened. All those memories come back. And I'm sure it's just swirling and swirling that this wonderful thing has happened, this momentous thing has happened, but what do we do now? What happens next? What now? What are we supposed to do now? And that's when the amazing things happen. They've locked the door, and who comes through but Jesus? How did he get there? Well, he's Jesus. He's come through a locked door to comfort them, to bring them peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Three times in this gospel, Jesus brings that peace to the people 
who are doubting and hurting and fearful and have no idea what they're supposed to do next. Let's just take a moment, he says, and have some peace in our hearts in this place and change the mood of what's going on in this room. The peace that Jesus brings is a special peace though, right? Isn't it? It's the peace that passes all understanding. But there's not just peace in here. Jesus is also bringing faith to those who had doubt. And the opposite of faith, or the opposite of doubt rather, is not faith but fear. And that's why the disciples had been there in the first place. So they, you know, the 11, of they've all gotten it figured out. They've seen Jesus the week before. They tell Thomas they're back there a week later. So even though they've had this experience a week before, again, the next week, they're back in that room with the door shut. Again, Jesus shows up, this time for Thomas. And I, again, I want to say, you know, maybe he is a, a doubter in some respects, but he's not just a doubter. He is aggressively pursuing the truth. Even though he had his doubts, he showed up there too with hope, not with doubt. The same reason we all come here for hope and peace because of our faith. Now what? Now what are we called to do? Well, if we read um, the book of Acts as um, the, the passage that Judy just read a little while ago, we know that Peter and the disciples are gonna go out and start spreading the news very, very quickly. And they're arrested for that. And in this text that Judy just read, they're taken kind of to a trial before the high priest. And like us, they're talking about how they were witnesses to all of these things that have happened just a few weeks before this. And unlike the night when Jesus was betrayed, Peter doesn't deny three times to people who don't even matter. Peter stands up in front of the high priest who holds his life in his hands and proclaims the good news of Jesus Christ. Peter has done a complete 360 on everything that happened because of what happened in that room. What do we do now? I was thinking about um, this this morning. I was looking at some of the hymns. There's so many wonderful um, Easter hymns, and, and not just because I'm a, a little tired and didn't go on vacation this week, but I thought, you know, we do lessons and carols the Sunday after Christmas. Why don't we do lessons and carols of some sort the Sunday after Easter? You know, give the pastor a break, because there are a lot of great Easter hymns and a lot of great Easter anthems. There are, in fact, 34 Easter hymns in the ELW, seven of which have something to do with Christ is risen today in the title. The other ones I were thinking about was um, if you get um, the, the message from Luther Seminary every morning, my God, what a morning. I love my God, what a morning. And the other one I really, really love, every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day is resurrection day. The past is over and done because every morning is Easter morning. Throughout all of the seasons of the year, even when we're celebrating Christmas and Lent and Advent and Trinity Sunday, every morning is Easter morning because of what happened in that room, because of what happened on that cross, because of what happened at that empty tomb. Every morning is Easter morning and we are Easter people. So here is the message that I think is so important from these texts that we have today. Psalm 118, um, I love Psalm 118 as well. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But there's this other wonderful line that talks that I may die, not die, but live. Now, everybody else would assume if you've written, I don't want to die, I want to live, you don't need that second part, right? I mean, if you don't want to die, obviously you want to live. But this is a rhetorical device that is pretty common in the Old Testament. It's a, rep a repetition. I don't want to do this. I want to do that. And we get the same thing in this text from John. John says, do not doubt. Jesus says, rather, do not doubt, but believe. It kind of tells us that there are ways of not doubting that aren't about proclaiming the good news. There are ways of not dying that aren't about living in the newness that, that Christ delivered. And that is what we are called to do. We are not just called not to doubt, 
We are called to have faith and proclaim that faith like Peter did before the high priest. And we are not just called not to worry about our death, but to live every day in abundant life that Jesus brought to us. That is what was the remarkable thing that happened in that room on that day and a week later. And we get to proclaim that good news, not just in this room, but wherever we go in the world. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that you can come through locked doors to bring us peace, to uphold our faith, and to remind us that our belief in you brings us newness of life every day. In your name we pray. Amen. We are going to sing uh, hymn 375, Alleluia, Christ is Risen. unfamiliar hymn to sing. <laughs> Let us uh, please stand as you are able as we confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on the inside front cover of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that, they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our ELCA partner congregations in Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Colombia. And bless this congregation in all our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayers. prayers. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. Bless our farmers and their families and all who depend on their bounty. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. And especially today, Lord, we pray for the people of Ethiopia, Myanmar, Ukraine, and Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Uphold your children who cry out to you for any reason. And especially today, Lord, we ask that you look after those in our community, our congregation, and our families who are suffering in any way. Linda Tollefsrud, Maxine Finnesgaard, Jeff Gerard, Adele Twight, Grady Lundgren, Rosalie Statler, Dale Buxengard, Sandra Rower, Ron and Dawn Stone, Paul Morkin, Jerry Warden, Carmona Wistie, Lori Hagen Jensen, Judy Robley, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Yiris, Sharon Onstead Johnson, Rachel Krensky, Shirley Gerard, Sandra Wenig, Mavis Johnsrud, Sawyer Oaks, and Jennifer Wedman, and for the family and friends of Dolores Jacobs, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. 
Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever we are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear people of God, receive God's blessing of peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is number 548, Rise, O Church, Like Christ Arisen. One thing hasn't changed from last week. We still say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace and tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.